Good evening. Here we are again. Great to talk to you. So today I want to speak to you about your big brother. <laughs> I think sometimes we all need a big brother. Hey? I know that um, I never had a big, big brother with me in school, but I had a little brother who thought he was very big. I do remember there was a day where somebody wanted to attack him and I marched in like a big sister and I took charge and I actually won the fight. Um, but we all need somebody that will fight on our behalf. Now today I'm a married woman and um, and I have a tough uh, job that I'm doing. Not this, this is fun and I love doing this and speaking to you. But I know in my my kind of world and the kind of work that I have that often you will have enemies. You make enemies. Just by being around, you make an enemy. But we all need to have somebody that will stand in our corner and fight for us. And, you know, sometimes we all feel so alone. We feel like whatever I'm doing now, um, it makes no sense to me. And nobody even cares that I'm in this situation. I just listened to the life story of somebody last week, a woman that was uh, kidnapped and she was held captive for three days and sexually molested in three days' time and how it messed her life up and how lonely she felt where she's coming from. Her life was not good. This happened, caused a more harm. Then her, um, her husband left her. <coughs> and the whole story, it, it seems like she was all by herself with not a single soul caring that she was going through what she was going through. And it is a pity because we all need somebody in our corner. I know that I've got different people standing in my corner, but I've got my husband who's really the best um, f fighting for me and standing for me and believing in me. But we need that person. But then I have friends. I've got people I can talk to. Yeah, I've got my sister, my elder sister, she lives in Namibia. And um, when I sometimes go through patches in life, then I'll phone her. And I say, I need your prayer. This is happening. Then I've got my niece in Durban. And I can phone my niece and say, hey, things are not looking good. I need your prayer. And I've got my daughter. And I've got so many people that, that have gathered around me. Those people... They will carry me. But they are also the kind of people that will tell me, you're wrong. <laughs> you need to change your attitude. You need to do this or do that. And I have to sometimes just bite the bullet and do what they say, simply because I need them to carry me. And I need to rely on their wisdom in times when I feel I cannot do it myself. Now, when I read in the Bible, I think if I could quote this this message, and I'll, I'll name this message rather, I would call it the strong and mighty name of God. Did you know? He has a very powerful name. God's name is a strong name. Jesus, the name of Jesus, carries so much power that we sometimes feel we need flesh and blood around us. But if you've got nobody fighting for you, believing in, in you, standing up for you, or just, just being there for you, then you feel sometimes you are just all by yourself. That is when you've got no flesh and blood around you. But that is the time that you must understand that what is in you is more powerful than what is surrounding you. And what is in you really carries so much weight. That is when you have to have a real encounter with Jesus. Now remember, when you read the Bible, you can actually see some of the Bible figures like Queen Esther, for one. You can go and read the book of Esther. Love the story of Esther. Such a romantic story. If you go and watch the movie, you know, they added some romance to it. But the truth of the story is that she had an uncle or a nephew rather by the name of Mordecai who really believed in her, who encouraged her, but who saw further than what she saw in her current state of where she was. Her things around about her did not look all that fantastic. But at the time of pressure, he reminded her that you're not alone. There's a whole army of people around you. There's a whole nation that depends on you. 
you cannot say, oh, I've had enough. You know those words, I cannot handle those words. Then people say, I've just had it. I've had enough. I just cannot take it any longer. We say those words. And actually the truth is when you say those words, you prophesy over your own life. Did you know that? You declare over your life that you are not capable. You speak over your own life. I am not, I'm not capable and I cannot do it. You limit your progress. You limit what God wants to do over your life. Every time you say those words, I've had it. I, I'm giving up. I'm not going to do it. This is too much for me. No, I'm not made for this man. Nonsense. We are made from steel, man. God made us. We don't break that easily. But anyway, Queen Esther was sitting in the palace just at the time that things came together for her. She's the queen and voila, her life is coming together. Everything works out. When all this Hammond stories, and you can go read about it in the book, book of Esther, just four chapters, go read about it. When all the Hammond stories started happening and she felt totally pressurized by that because her nephew there in the gates came to her and said, you are the one that must rescue us. Now, you know, when you are just one woman and a nation relies on you, they depend on you, your, your family depend on you, your, your work depend on you, whatever you do depends on you. You need to know who is in your corner. Now, what Esther did is very clever. She called the people that she could rely on closer. Just those few people. And she said, I want to do this. I want to first speak to Haman and then to the king. And I want you to call out a three-day fast. Go read the story. And then whatever she did is very powerful. Because we need to understand. We need to know who is in our corner. Who stands behind us. And if I say this to you, God's name is so powerful, you have no idea. The name of Jesus. It goes beyond anything. She never had the name of Jesus, but she understood the principle of fasting and praying and gathering people around her of like-mindedness that will stand together with her and fast and pray with her. Now, when I read the Bible, and I want to read it to you in the book of Revelations, it is Revelation 16, verse 15, and it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. You know, in other words, there's nothing before me that's greater. There's nothing after me that's greater. There's nothing that was that's greater. There's nothing coming that's greater. I am the Almighty God. Guess what? When you ask Him to be on your side, when you ask Him to come into your life, when you start saying His name and you start proclaiming His name, He's right there in your corner. He stands and He watches over you. You know, there are times in my kind of work that I actually go into dangerous places. And I keep on saying to people, I'm fearless. I literally am fearless. I don't, I'm not scared of the dark and I'm not scared of a multitude of people, whichever race it is. I'm not scared of going into a township or in a good ship or a whatever place. I'm not scared. I think the thing I fear the most is a mosquito. You know why my best friend died of malaria and mosquitoes, they are so sneaky. They come in the middle of the night and go, that's the thing I fear the most. Not because I think I will have malaria. I just hate having a mosquito around me. And I just want to swat them and kill them. And of course, I don't like flies either and things like that. But I'm not afraid of spiders. I'm not afraid of snakes. Simply because I am starting to proclaim over my life, I'm fearless. Why? Because, you know, I know who's in my corner. I really know who is in my corner. And understanding the power of the Almighty God, He's in your corner and He's fighting on your behalf. Listen, I just know while I'm talking, I can just sense this. And I know this is a pre-recording, but I'm telling you this. I'm sensing there are people 
watching and listening to my voice saying, but you don't understand, Marianne, I am totally alone. To you, I want to say tonight, call upon the name of Jesus. You don't even have to say it loud. You know, there are nights when I just sense that the atmosphere isn't right or something isn't right in the dark, in the middle of the night. I actually get up then and I go to my lounge. I've got a chair there. And sometimes I sit on the chair, but sometimes I just walk up and down and I say, Jesus, Jesus. Because we don't always know what to say, but he knows exactly what we need. And you know that every time I say, Jesus, Jesus, even saying it now, it's like there's a presence that comes into this room. Because he, when he hears his name, he is there. He's right there and the Holy Spirit comes and he's talking in your heart and things come together and you, and you know what, what happens is things may not change, but your mind comes and it becomes peaceful. You feel it in your, I tell you, your blood pressure will even be better because of the name of Jesus because he is God Almighty. And I want you to know something. When Esther, got the guts together to do the right thing. You may feel like that. Hey, you may want to fast. Even if you cannot fast, just take a morning or take an afternoon and just spend that time quietly writing down a scripture. Put the scripture in front of you and start reading it. Hey, I remember the day when the Lord gave me a scripture and I was going through a tough emotional fight in my life. And then that scripture started making sense to me in Proverbs 3 verse 5. Quote that scripture that says, oh my goodness, it just went out of my mind. 3 verse 5, it says, um, um, I'll get it now. You can type it down. But that scripture became a reality in my life. It says, so much of what you want to do, Jesus has to be first. He is the one fighting your battle. And I'm telling you now, every time I quote Psalm 23, that last bit, I say it with, by myself. I will even write it down and just say it for surely. I like that word surely. Eh? Um, they, I don't think there's an Afrikaans word for surely. Surely. What does surely mean? It means definite. For sure. There's no argument. Surely. Goodness. And mercy shall follow me. Then I say to myself, it doesn't matter what I go through now. Jesus is fighting on my behalf. God Almighty, he's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He was. He and he is to come. He is God Almighty. And he is fighting for me. And when I say it, surely, Marianne, goodness and mercy shall follow you. Then I just say it. I will write it down. And I know there's songs about it. I'll even sing it. And if I'm alone, and you know, sometimes in my work circumstances, it's like you are alone. And I will sit there and I'll write the scriptures down and say, Lord, this is the word I declare over the situation. I declare this. I declare that God is the God Almighty over the situation. God Almighty, do you know what it means? Almighty. You get mighty strong people, hey, I know strong people and they're really strong and they think they're mighty strong. Mighty. Because this is what might is, your might. Your everything that's the strong section of you. So I'm mighty, I'm strong. But you know what? There's no one that beats God almighty. He rules over every circumstance. But you know, he can only rule as far as we allow him. Isn't that so? It's like you have the strongest neighbor living right next to you. And on the other side, you have the best policeman. On the other side, you have a wrestler. And on the opposite you, you have the best, um, oh, I don't even know what you want to call all these people, strong people. But in your house, something is happening and you're half dead. And they say, but why didn't you call me? You have my number. Your people an incident like that happened to me this week. I am looking after my 93-year-old mother. And as I was just going out to go and do something, she fell. And she fell very strange. 
and and I didn't know at the time what to do. I know I can phone the ambulance. They will come and help. But right now I needed something to help me with the situation. And I went on to my neighborhood watch group and I texted. I said, somebody with first aid, I need help immediately. Within seconds, ach man, goodness me, I haven't even finished that text. I went to the front door, the doorbell was ringing. My neighbor across the road was there. She came and she helped with the situation. Let me tell you something. Jesus is even closer than that. He's closer than that. When you feel you cannot cope with your circumstances, he is your God Almighty. And like Queen Esther, when she came to the place that she realized I cannot fight this by myself. Let's fast and pray. You may want to do that. To get to a place where the Lord will give you wisdom. Why did she fast and pray? Because she needed to fast and pray. No. She fasted and prayed. And she called the people in the nation to fast and pray with her. Because she knew there is power in the combined prayer. There are people wanting to pray with you. Just get them in on your circle. Ah, I hear you when you say, I don't want to share my private business with people. And that's why you still are where you are. You know that. Because you cannot fight your battles alone. We need people. And the more you allow people to hear what you are going through, the more they can pray for you. But make sure that you get prayer warriors around you. <laughs> it is dangerous just to, to get the warawaras around you. Just get the people that pray. But the moment you understand, let's read that scripture again. I want you to hear this. This is what the Lord says. Revelations 1 verse 8. I am the Alpha. In other words, I'm right there at the beginning. I am the Omega. Right at the end says the Lord. I am who was, who is, and who is to come. I am your God, the Almighty. He wants to fight for you. You do not have to fight alone. You know, there I know in my neighborhood, watch, it's quite funny because we are so active in this group. But sometimes the dogs would be barking in the one corner of our street or our neighborhood. And here in the middle of the night, somebody will be typing, why are the dogs barking? And somebody else will be awake. They would have heard the dogs. And they say, no, there's another dog in the street. Then the security, because we've got a security on this watch group as well. And then the security would say, I will go around and check. <laughs> this is very much how it works with Jesus. When you are concerned, speak to him. Call upon the name of Jesus. I promise you, sometimes you don't know what to say because you don't know what's going on. But when you say the name of Jesus, Jesus, just like something happens in the atmosphere, I tell you what, Jesus is great. He's almighty. He's God almighty. And he's fighting on your behalf. You do not have to be afraid. For those of you tonight that are going through abusive situations, I know you, you feel like you've got no way out. I want you to go and write down the Bible verse. So that says, God is fighting for me. I will not be afraid. You find it in Joshua. It says, the Lord said to Joshua, it says, therefore I command you, do not be afraid. <laughs> because why? God Almighty is fighting on your behalf. He's the one that was and is to come. He's not going to change. You know, that will never change. Yes, you may feel that people change. And yes, you may feel that you have changed. And yes, you may feel that nothing works out. But when you call upon that name, things changes. Don't give up on it, though, because this is how we are. Aren't we just like that? We call upon the name of Jesus once, twice, maybe three times. And we say, He's not hearing. I'm going to fight this battle myself. That is, if Queen Esther did that, I tell you what, there wouldn't have been a Jewish nation today. That's how big it is to keep up in what you are doing, to hear from the Lord in what you should do and who you need to gather around you. I want you to know 
that he's fighting on your behalf. He's in your corner. He's standing there, right back in and shouting for you. His name is the strong and mighty name. The Bible also says the name of the Lord is like a tower. Hey? The righteous runs into that name and they find shelter. When you do that, it's like you cover yourself up with the goodness and the mercy and the favor of God. And then you will see he is fighting for you. Please try it for five days in a row. Write it down. Put it on your reminder box. Do something that you just say, Jesus. You don't even have to know what you're saying it for. But just talk to him, Jesus, and see what happens in your life. Your testimony will be great, I promise you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are the Alpha and you are the Omega. There are many times in my life that I had to learn to rely totally and fully upon who Jesus is, the strong God Almighty. Lord, I pray for everyone listening to my voice, that they will just sense your presence, but they will practice the presence of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness that you have. Thank you that we can rely on the testimony of your goodness. Thank you. You are God Almighty, the strong, powerful name that's above every other name. Yes, Lord, in the Bible says that at the mention, just the mention of the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. So every circumstance will come in line when we mention the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray for everyone watching that you will strengthen them, that you will give them wisdom in how to deal with these circumstances. But Lord, let them run into the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We'll chat again.